Hi, first graders. It's time to read together again. We're going to read some more of My Father's Dragon, and we are on chapter eight. We're getting so close to the end. There's only 10 chapters. Do you remember what happened in chapter seven? That was the chapter called My Father Meets a Lion. And we finally found out what happens with the lion that's on the cover. Remember the lion is really upset about his mother coming to visit. He's worried about his hair being tangled. So the father teaches him how to brush it and how to add beautiful ribbons. And he distracts him enough that he can escape. So now we're on chapter eight called My Father Meets a Gorilla. My father was very hungry. So he sat down under a baby banyan tree on the side of the trail and ate four tangerines. He wanted to eat eight or 10, but he only had 13 left and it might be a long time before he could get more. He packed away all the peels and was about to get up when he heard the familiar voices of the boars. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen them with my own eyes, but wait and see for yourself. All the tigers are sitting around chewing gum to beat the band. Old rhinoceros is so busy brushing his tusk that he doesn't even look around to see who's going by. And they're all so busy they won't even talk to me. Horse feathers, said the other boar, now very close to my father. They'll talk to me. I'm going to go to get, I'm going to get to the bottom of this and if, it's, if, <laughs> if it's the last thing I do. The voices passed my father and went around a curve and he hurried on because he knew how much more upset the boars would be when they saw the lion's mane tied up with hair ribbons. Before long, my father came to a crossroads and he stopped to read the signs. Straight ahead, an arrow pointed to the beginning of the river. To the left, the ocean rocks, and to the right, to the dragon fairy. You know what a fairy is? Not a fairy like with wings. A fairy can mean a boat that brings you across, but this time it's a dragon fairy. So instead of a boat that brings you across, it's a dragon. My father was reading all these signs when he heard paw steps and ducked behind the signpost. A beautiful lioness paraded past and turned down toward the clearings. Although she could have seen my father if she had bothered to glance at the post, she was much too occupied looking dignified to see anything but the tip of her own nose. It was the lion's mother, of course. And that, thought my father, must mean that the dragon was on this side of the river. He hurried on, but it was farther away than he had judged. There goes the lion's mother. You see the, the father behind the sign? He finally came to the riverbank in the late afternoon and, and looked all around, but there was no dragon anywhere in sight. He must have gone back to the other side. My father sat down under a palm tree and was trying to have a good idea when something big and black and hairy jumped out of the tree and landed with a loud crash at his feet. Well, said a huge voice. My father meets a gorilla. Well, what? Said my father, for which he was very sorry when he looked up and discovered he was talking to an enormous and very fierce gorilla. Well, explain yourself, said the gorilla. I'll give you till 10 to tell me your name business, your age, and what's in that pack. And he began counting to 10 as fast as he could. My father didn't even have time to say, Elmer Elevator, Explorer, before the gorilla interrupted, too slow, 
I'll twist your arm the way I twist that dragon's wings, and then we'll see if you can't hurry up a bit. He grabbed my father's arms, one in each fist, and he was just about to twist them when he suddenly let go and began scratching his chest with both hands. Blast those fleas, he raged. They won't give you a moment's peace. And the worst of it is that you can't even get a good look at them. Rosie, Rhonda, Rhoda, Rachel, Ruthie, Ruby, Roberta, come here and get rid of this flea on my chest. It's driving me crazy. Six little monkeys tumbled out of the palm tree, dashed to the gorilla, and began combing the hair on his chest. You know how monkeys will like pick through hair to find little bugs? Well, said the gorilla, it's still there. We're looking, we're looking, said the six little monkeys, but they're awfully hard to see, you know. I know, said the gorilla, but hurry, I've got work to do. And he winked at my father. Oh, gorilla, said my father. In my knapsack, I have six magnifying glasses. They'd be just the thing for hunting fleas. My father unpacked them and gave one to Rosie, one to Rhoda, one to Rachel, one to Ruthie, and one to Ruby, and one to Roberta. What? They're miraculous, said the six little monkeys. It's easy to see the fleas now, only there are hundreds of them. And they went on hunting frantically. Please jump really fast, they're hard to catch. A moment later, many more monkeys appeared out of a nearby clump of mangroves and began crowding around to get a look at the fleas through the magnifying glasses. They completely surrounded the gorilla and he could not see my father, nor did he remember to twist his arm. Got away from the gorilla. We'll read chapter nine next time. My father makes a bridge. That's a different title, isn't it? It isn't that he's meeting someone now. He's making a bridge. Can't wait to read it with you. Bye.